this is Dr. Ankur Gupta and Dr. Benjamin from RegularCrisis.com. And today we will be discussing a very important question: whether you can start weaning off your patient from ventilation or not. We will be discussing only patients who are on invasive mechanical ventilation, not on BiPAP or an IV. So you have a patient at the bedside on invasive mechanical ventilation, and the consultant or the attendant asks, or you yourself have the question in mind whether we can initiate the weaning process or not. So the answer is not very straightforward. You have to fulfill certain criteria. But here we will see certain mandatory things you should look for when you start the process. We have compiled in six steps. First thing you should see the primary process for which the patient was intubated is resolving or not resolving. Suppose you have a patient who had got pneumonia or ARDS for which you have intubated. Suppose you have a patient who suffered head injury and because of low GCs you intubated that patient. Suppose you had a patient of GBS or myasthenia who had a pump failure for which you have intubated the patient. So you should see whether GBS is improving, the muscle power is improving or not improving, whether his mnemonic patch is improving or not improving, whether the GCS of the patient is improving or not improving or in case of sepsis, whether the sepsis is improving or not improving. So the primary pathology should show a improving trend. Only then start the process. In certain conditions like in neurological cases, the patient may not show that much recovery in GCS. So we have to go for tracheostomy to start the weaning process. So the first criteria is the primary pathology for which the patient was intubated should show a recovery sign. Second, the patient should be conscious, alert, cooperative and should have a proper cough, should have a satisfactory cough. Why this is necessary? Because if the patient is not conscious, if the patient is not cooperative and is not having good cough, he will not be able to maintain the airway. He will not be able to expel the secretions. So then you need a tracheostomy in this patient in, in such cases. So patient should be alert, cooperative and should be able to have a good cough. At times you have seen in neuro patients that patient is good, he is conscious, alert, he is on ventilator, tolerating spontaneous mode ventilation, but he is not able to cough. Then, as soon as you extubate the patient, within 24 hours, he pulls up, piles up the secretions and then you need to re-ventilate, re-intubate or you need to go for tracheostomy. So, this is step number two. The third point is hemodynamic stability. Your patient should be hemodynamically stable if you need to start weaning off. Suppose a patient is on noradrenaline or adrenaline or vasopressin or multiple supports, then we all know that it's not a good time to wean out the patient. Your patient should not be on any vasopressor support. Here you can also judge the patient clinically. If the patient is on minimal supports like 3-4 mLs of norad or 3-4 mLs of adrenaline, you can think of seeing the clinical scenario whether we can wean off or not. But the most important thing is trend, trend of vasopressors. Suppose you had a patient in the morning who was not on vasopressor support. By afternoon, you had uh, taken the support of 3 mLs per hour. In technical criteria, you had a patient who is on minimal supports and now you can wean off. No, but the patient has shown a rising trend in the vasopressor. So this is a not good time to wean off. The trend should be in the on the tapering side and the patient should be on minimal or no vasopressor support. This is very, very important. Now, fourth and fifth point in terms of uh, your blood gases. In fourth, you should look for the FIO2 requirement. How much is the FIO2 requirement? Suppose patient is comfortable and maintaining saturation of 100%, but your FIO2 requirement is high, 80 to 90%. That means the lung pathology is not resolved. Patient will not be able to wean off so easily. Your PEEP requirement is high. Your PEEP should be less than 5 and your PO2 in the ABG should be more than 60. So PEEP less than 5. FIO2 less than 50 and your PO2 in the ABG should be more than 60. So you should fulfill these things. If these are not met, that means your lung is not in a position to get vein off so easily. Fifth point is regarding PCO2. We have seen that COPD patients who get ventilated, their baseline PCO2 is little bit high, uh, somewhere around 60, 65. Those who don't know or those who are new to this, there is a link at the top of this video or in the description where you can know how to calculate the baseline PCO2 of a COPD patient. In COPD patients or chronic uh, OSA patient, the PCO2 remains at a little bit higher level. So PCO2 should be in a comfortable range according to the clinical condition of the patient. How you will know that? Suppose if a patient is of COPD and OSA, 
if the if the PCO2 is even 60 or 55 or 65, but your pH is near normal, 7.35 or 7.36, that means it is adequate. But if a PCO2 is 60 and your pH is 7.12 or 7.2, that means this is respiratory acidosis even on the ventilator. So it's not a good time to we know this patient. So number five is your PCO2 and pH should be in an acceptable range for that particular patient. And number six, your patient should be afebrile. High grade fever can cause hemodynamic instability, tachycardia and all other derangements. So your patient should be preferably afebrile. So if we sum up the six steps which you should see in a patient who is on ventilator and you want to start weaning off are first you should look for the primary pathology whether, whether it is resolving or not resolving how will be the trend you should assess that clinically second patient should be conscious alert following commands cooperative and should have a good cough this is very 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 important we usually do a tracheostomy in patient who is not able to cough properly for weaning process third hemodynamic stability your patient should not be on high vasopressors your patient should be either having no supports of vasopressors or minimal support and the trend should be towards the tapering off side, not the rising trend. Fourth, your PO2 levels in blood gases, PO2 should be more than 60, your PEEP should be less than 5 and your FI2 should be less than 50. Sixth, the pH and PCO2 according to the patient should be in comfortable range. Even if the PCO2 is 60 or 55, if a COPD patient or OSA patient, your pH should be maintained around 7.35 or more than 7.35. There should not be any respiratory acidosis. And the sixth point is patient should be afebrile. So next time when somebody asks you whether we should wean off this patient or not wean off this patient, follow these six steps and you will get the answer most of the time. Thank you for listening. So now we will go at the patient bedside and we will try to apply six steps and we will see whether we can wean off or not wean off this patient. So we are at the patient bedside. This is case number one. We will try to apply all those six steps in this patient and we will decide whether we can wean off this patient or not. So the primary pathology, so this patient was admitted because of cardiogenic shock, pulmonary edema, she was not able to maintain on NIV, she also had AKI, not responded to diuretics, so for that we had ventilated. And currently the chest is not good, how we, we can decide? You can see the FIO2 requirement is 100%, on, even on 100% she is not able to maintain the oxygenation. So the primary pathology is not at all improved, in fact it is deteriorated. Second. The patient is on sedation, she is not conscious, following commands or oriented. So that criteria also is not filled. Third, hemodynamic stability. As you can see, the patient is on multiple vasopressor supports, norad, adrenaline, dopamine. These are the supports and their levels are also very high, 15, 15 mL per hour. So hemodynamic instability is there. Fourth point, blood gas, PO2 is low, she is on 100% FiO2 and Fifth point is PCO2, though it is maintained, and she is afebrile at the moment. So, out of those six steps, four steps uh, she fails to clear. First, the primary pathology. Second, the conscious level. Third, the hemodynamic stability. And fourth, the blood gas and the FiO2 levels. The PCO2 uh, level she is matching. She is afebrile, but any of the step is if doesn't fits, we can't wean off this patient. So, definitely we are not going to wean off this patient. Let's move on to case number two. So this is case number two. This is a case of GBS, gullion berry syndrome. This is the 10th day. We intubated this patient because there was a pump failure. There was a muscle weakness. The patient was not able to maintain on the NIV. So we ventilated this patient. So let's apply all those six steps. First, the primary pathology for which the patient was intubated, whether it has resolved or not. So in GBS patient, the muscle power has not improved till now. So we need, we require ventilation for that. Second, conscious level, alertness level and the cough. Though the patient is conscious in GBS, usually the patient remains conscious, but the cough is not good enough. He is not able to cough out. That's why we need to do a tracheostomy in this patient. Third, hemodynamic stability. So the patient is currently on 7 ml of noradrenaline infusion. Though the blood pressure is, he is maintaining and this, this is showing a decreasing trend. We are tapering off this vasopressor support. Fourth, the ventilator settings, the blood gas. The FiO2 is 60%, PEEP is 5 and in the ABG he is maintaining the PO2 more than 60%. But still the FiO2 requirement is a little bit high. He is on spontaneous mode ventilation. PCO2 levels are fair enough and he is afebrile. So he doesn't fill the 
three four steps in our first the permi pathology not resolved second uh, your patient is conscious but not able to cough properly that's why we need to do tracheostomy third hemodynamics improving but still not in the safe range it's still high at 7 ml per hour fourth point oxygenation is good it's decreasing trend but still the fio2 is 60% though pco2 and afebrile criteria is met so definitely we are not going to win off today but in next few days as soon as they improve we'll win off but that to be tracheostomy not we will extubate the patient because the cough will remain poor for a longer period of time so now we move on to the last and third case so this is our third case this is a young fellow with bilateral pneumonia and this is the 6 7 day now we had to take a decision whether we can extubate this patient or not so so the first step the primary pathology definitely there is an improvement in the lung pathology his pneumonia is resolving his x-ray is showing improvement is f5 to requirement has decreased second the patient consciousness level though the patient is conscious though the patient is follow some commands but his cough is not so good he tries to cough but the cough is not so satisfactory so third hemodynamic stability so as you can see the patient is not on any vasopressor support so that's a, that's a good thing fourth his blood gases so definitely there was an improvement his fio2 requirement decreased to 40% p less than 5 and po2 was more than 80 in the blood gases so that's a good thing in the fifth point pco2 levels were matching ph was okay and the patient has become afebrile so out of these steps only the cough part is not satisfactory the primary pathology resolved patient is conscious following command patient is hemodynamically stable blood gases are okay pco2 levels are okay and patient is febrile but we are not very comfortable with the cough but still we have given the tp style it's been one hour of tp style as you can see the patient is slightly become tachycardic the heart rate is 124 saturation is 93 with 3 4 ml of oxygen that is fine but the respiratory rate is 21 so he is become slightly tachycardic slightly tachypneic on tp style so this is not a good time to extubate the patient will take the patient back on spontaneous mode ventilation and will repeat the tp style next day so we hope now you have a better clarification on whether to start the winning process in a patient who is in the icu or not thank you for watching do subscribe regularcrisis.com